Brothers and sisters, I'm sure we'll all agree that we must remain grounded to the principles that have made us the true church. Edward, you're pacing. But we will hold fast to the truth. This could be another train wreck, just like last time. Just, just explain it to them like you did to me. Let me see this tie's not straight. No matter our desire to see it differently, the scriptural evidence is abundantly clear. Now, um, let's get your jacket. Listen to him. He's gonna roast me out there like Westside. Remember Westside, Jimmy? Oh, yeah, I remember. Now, l let me see you. I'd like to thank our speaker, Dr. Sim. Oh, your, your shoe's untied. And, um, here, let's put, put it right here. Right up here. Okay. Our next speaker, Edward Fudge, takes a different position. He's smart, articulate. Yeah. Thanks for letting me shoot this, Edward. Kind of takes you back, doesn't it? <laughs> it does, Jimmy. <laughs> Indeed, it does. All right, for the record, Mr. Fudge, if you could give us your name and spell it. Edward Fudge, spelled just like it tastes, F-U-D-G-E, Fudge. Tell us about this new project you're doing. How did it come about? Well, uh, I was approached by a Canadian fellow named Robert Smead, and uh, he's been consumed with this whole idea of hell. What happens to the lost? Do they suffer for eternity or not? Well, this, this fellow had read some of my articles and, and offered to pay me a little money to study the subject, so that is what I'm prepared to do. You like doing research? Biblical research, I mean. Well, I, sh I should. I should have come by it naturally enough. Uh, my, my, my father used to host a, a variety in radio show, Spiritual Guidance. Uh, well, that, was, that was his old zenith right there. <laughs> huh. Still works. Oh, yeah. Yeah, these, these were built to last. Yeah, we used to listen to his show on this very radio. Ah, he used to love to go with him. Hello, and welcome to Spiritual Guidance. I'm Brother Benny Lee Fudge, and today we are going to attempt to answer more of your questions straight from the Word of God. Now, first off, we have one from a dear woman who lives out Elkmont Way. She writes, Dear Brother Fudge, Six months ago, my husband left me for another woman. Honey, supper's ready. Could you call the children? <laughs> well, that Dagwood bum said. My daddy was a godly, spiritual man. Now, his one guilty pleasure was reading the funny papers every night before supper. This letter is from a woman named Mrs. R. And she writes, Dear Brother Fudge, I'm writing about my daughter. It seems she has taken an interest in a certain young man in her class. You better be careful, Sawyer. You might break your microphone. Supper's ready. You go wash up now. Yes, sir. My dear, may I have some of your delicious okra? You certainly may. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, Edward, I understand that you enrolled in another correspondence course. Yes, sir. The fourth this year. Knights of Columbus, Back to the Bible, The Church That Christ Built, and now Voice of Prophecy. I wish you wouldn't send away with those things. It makes me uncomfortable. I sent away for popular science. Isn't anyone worried about me? <laughs> Henry, I got more word for you than I can shake a stick at. <laughs> Honey, Edward, he needs to study things for himself. You know, he'll be all right. He's a smart boy. You just remember, son. If the Bible teaches it, it's true. Even if the whole world is against it. Pass the biscuits. So, Edward, mm. what exactly does the Bible teach about hell? What does it teach? Mm -hmm. Well... Pretty much comes down to two views. The traditionalist view, where the wicked are judged and consigned to a fiery place of eternal torture. They burn forever. 
and the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever. Revelation, 1411. Uh, seems pretty cut and dry. And the other guys? Oh, those are the so-called conditionalists. Now, they want you to believe that the, the wicked are punished, yes, but for only as long as it takes to do the job right. Not forever. Not forever. And you don't buy it? Well, let's just say that I am skeptical. But we will get to the bottom of it with our friendly index cards. Now, I have labeled the two camps, and I will put up the arguments, the references, the notes and citations, and then we will compare and see who comes out ahead. OK. First stop is weekends worth of research at Vanderbilt University, so I'd better go put on a coat and tie. Well, well. <laughs> I'll see you next week. Good. That'll give me a chance to interview some of your friends without having you around. Oh, tampering with the witnesses. Mm-hmm. Well, just stay away from that Joe Mark character. Now, he has been known to play fast and loose with the truth from time to time. Mm. Thanks for the warning. See you. OK. Sarah Faye. Now, I guess Edward wasn't very good at sports. Not unless you call it ping pong sport. Now, we've known each other since third grade. And the thing about Edward was, just when you thought you knew him, he'd go and do something unexpected. Like when it came time to turn in our eighth grade class themes. Now, most of us have written about baseball or you know, summer vacation, the usual stuff. And not Edward. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> In defense of the New Testament canon? Edward, did your father help you write this? No, ma'am. You sure? My father's approach is strictly hermeneutical. Well, I believe there's room for more interpretation without sacrificing the Bible's intrinsic infallibility. I see. You may sit down. In defense of the New Testament canon. <laughs> Talk about your real crowd pleaser. I, I remember we ripped him pretty good that evening out at Indian Creek Crossing. That's where we used to go, Edward and me and Davy. <sighs> Davy Hollis. I... Edward really looked up to him. Heck, we both did. I... He just seemed, uh, I don't know, grown up, I guess you could say. So this um, New Testament canon is it just some kind of, you know, big ack ack gun that shoots Bibles or something? I mean, how'd you, how'd you come up with something like that? It's not that kind of canon. It's uh... I I know. Think I'm I'm stupid or something? No. I... Anyway, learned about it from my dad. Good old brother Fudge. I'm sure he's enjoying you hanging around me. Never says much about it. Except he misses seeing you in church. Yeah? Who cares? You're probably going to hell anyway. Maybe. Maybe I have places I'm going first. You guys want to snort? Yeah, you guys are probably still too young anyways. So, Davey, where are you going to go? <sighs> I don't know. There's a whole world out there beyond Athens, Alabama. You haven't noticed. So, you just going to pack up and leave? Yeah, as soon as I turn 18, I'm enlisting, joining in the Navy. But you're coming back, aren't you? I mean, Afterwards. It depends on, on what's out there. I mean, I may I may find myself an island somewhere, you know, just live off coconuts. I mean, you and Jojo, you guys are more than welcome to come and visit me if you want. You can't live just on coconuts. How do you know? You live off a of barbecue. Yeah. But with barbecue, you get sads. True. So, you just go off by yourself? To live? Without a family. It's like Jojo said. Well, probably end up in hell anyways. All right, um, I gotta get back. I told my old man that I help him move his short blocks. You wanna ride? My dad would kill me. He says you drive like a maniac. 
You, you want to lift? We got our backs. Suit yourself, sissies. I think that was a critical night for Edward. Of course, he didn't know it at the time. Neither of us did. But his world was about to get shifted a few degrees. My very educated mother just served us nine pizzas. Oh, I get it. Hello, boys. How's it going? I just learned all the planets in one minute. Well, that's fine, son. Henry, I need to talk to Edwin. Go see if your mother needs some help. Thank you, son. What's going on? Come sit. You know Davy Hollis, don't you? Sure, he's a good friend. Mm-hmm. Well, I just got off the phone with his mother. What do you do, leave town already? No. There was a car accident. What happened? Apparently, he lost control out on old 14 near Haggard's Creek. His pickup flipped over into a ditch and pinned him underneath. Is he okay? They say he died instantly. I'm sorry, Swan. I am truly sorry. Where is he? What? Where's Davy now? Well, he's at the Curtis Funeral Home. They're preparing him for services. That's not what I mean. Is he in hell? Is Davy in hell? Well. Was Davy baptized? No. It's a tragic thing to die without knowing the Lord. Then that's what you're saying, that Davy's burning in hell. It's not what I say. The Bible is clear on that point. Sin is abhorrent to God, and the wages of sin is death. He's going to burn forever for just wanting to see the world. No, I don't claim to have all the answers. I wish I did. Well, I think the death of that Hollis boy really changed him. It made him question things maybe he hadn't thought about. You see, when you have a friend and then suddenly he's gone, and you're told he's burning forever in hell, that would change you. That would change anybody. Well, Jimmy, it has been an interesting few days studying what all the recent authors say. Let me, uh, let me show you. Okay. Oh, I, I, didn't, I didn't know you were filming. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> this is my wife, Sarah Faye. Hi, I'm, I'm Jimmy. Hi. Uh, Edward, I just wanted to tell you that your supper's getting cold. Okay, I'll be right there. Okay. Okay. Then, um, I'll, I'll just let you finish. Well, at least say goodbye. <sighs> Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> now, she, she just hates it when I am late for supper, so let's, let's get through these right quick. Okay. Okay, first, the traditionalists, they believe God will burn sinners forever in hell. Is that what you believe? Well, pretty much. Uh, the conditionalists, they say that the sinners will be burned up, destroyed, annihilated, not suffer eternal pain in the fires of hell. Well, I see. Now, these are their major points of contention. First, 
The traditionalists believe that the Old Testament well, pretty much ignored the whole issue, mm. while, uh, while the conditionalists, they say that the, uh, the Old Testament had plenty to say. Now, we'll have to see what's what. Right. The, uh, the traditionalists, they say that the, 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 the Jewish writers between the Old and the New uh, Testament uh, taught eternal conscious torment. I, I didn't know there were writers between the Old and New Testament. Oh, sure. 400 years of them. And uh, their, their ideas carried right on over into Jesus' day. Really? Uh, this side over here says there was no unified view of hell in Jesus' day. Now, are you, are you following this? I think so. Okay. Traditionalists say that when Jesus came along, he pretty much agreed with the Jewish writers, eternal conscious torment. And uh, the conditionalists, well, they would, they would strongly disagree. They say Jesus did not teach eternal torment. Now, traditionalists say that from the apostles, through the reformers, right on down to our own day, the church has always taught eternal torment. And this side, the conditionalists, these guys over here, they say that the church was influenced by Greek philosophy, and that's where the traditionals got their view. Hmm. So that's it? Well, that is the, uh, the big four, as I see it. Now, we'll have to see how it all plays out. Would you like to stay for supper? Oh, thanks. Uh, I've got to get this film developed, so uh, okay. I'll, okay. I'll see you later. So I didn't know there was going to be cameras in the house. Well, I didn't think to ask. Now, he just said he wanted to document the research. Seems to think it'll make an interesting film. <laughs> so how's that research coming? Well, we just get started, really, but uh, honestly, I think it'll be fun. Fun? Yeah. An adventure. Like being back in college again. Now, I remember when Benny Lee, he took Edward down to Florida to college. I didn't go along, because I thought it might be nice for them to have some time together. And you know that Edward, he just worshipped his father. Ben and Lee, he was proud of him, too. Deeply proud. It was hard for him to show it. Make sure and lock up this bicycle, so that we don't want it to serve as a temptation for somebody. I will. <laughs> so, you'll be in there. You want to see my room? It's a long drive back. I best get started. Well. See you in the funny papers. See you in the funny papers. That's all he said. Edward never knew, of course, is that that was the hardest thing his daddy had ever done. Leaving him there like that, pushed out of the nest like a fledgling. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Student Body Association, I want to personally welcome you to a new school year here at Coastal Christian College. Freshman Bible major? I can pick him out. <laughs> I also want to tell you about a tradition we have here at Coastal Christian. Each Friday, right out there in the steps of Williams Hall, we have what we have come to call the Sermon on the Steps. Now, it is open to everyone. It doesn't have to be some great oratory. A short sermon or devotional is plenty. And it also doesn't have to be long. A minute or two is just fine. But it just has to be good. Come on. Excuse me. Now, who was that? That's Don Holloway. It's Don Holloway. Well, who's, who's Don Holloway? Here, let me help you. Can you believe someone locked their bike right on mine? Sorry, it's mine. It's yours? Well, I was afraid someone might want to borrow it. I don't think I'd worry about that. <laughs> there you go, all clear. Thanks. Hi. 
Hi again. Hello. Remember me? Yes. You left before I had a chance to properly introduce myself. I'm Edward Fudge. Edward who? Fudge. As delicious as it sounds. Well, that's easy. What about you? What's your name? I'm Sarah Fay. It's nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you, too. You, you a, a freshman? Yes. You? Yes. You, you from around here? No. Oh, me neither. I'm from Athens. Greece or Georgia? Alabama. <laughs> I didn't know there was one. Most folks don't. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, that Holloway guys, see somebody important? It's only our student body president. Oh, BMOC. A what? A BMOC, a big man on campus. Is that what you are, a BMOC? No, no, I'm just a lowly ministerial student. It was either that or play ping pong. That's hard to make a living. Preaching? Ping pong. I think you gotta be, like, Chinese or something. I was afraid of that. I think you ought to stick to just being a preacher. Well, this is me, over here. Thanks for the company. Oh, maybe I'll see you around? Kinda hard not to, especially around here. <laughs> Bye. Gnosticism derives from the term Gnostic, which was first used by Irenaeus to describe the school of Valentinius. In fact, the word Gnosticism itself does not appear in ancient writing at all. It was first coined by Henry Moore in a commentary on the seven letters of the book of Revelation, where Moore used the term to describe the heresy in Thyatira. Now, any questions? Yes, Mr. Fudge. It, it, it is my understanding that Gnosticism is considered one of the first heresies, and the other day I was... Okay, listen to me now. Grace can be a dangerous thing. It's God's universal sovereign. It's not constrained by denominational identities. It crosses barriers, it washes away distinctions, it's offered to everyone freely. In fact, to many, especially in our own church, the whole concept of grace is frightening. If grace got loose in our church, it could threaten some of our most deeply held beliefs. In the hands of the wrong person, it might really do some damage. That is why we have kept it under lock and key for so long. If folks got the idea that the power of God's grace trumped all religions, all denominations, all creeds, where would that leave us? Going to SMU. <laughs> Yeah, uh, SMU's got a good football team, go Broncos, but Mustangs. So are, are, are you saying that, that our church, our, our doctrines don't matter? Oh, you're missing the point. It's not about church membership. You're not saved by denominations. See, what we've done is to take our own unique doctrine and make a wall that separates us from other people. Here is how I've come to see it. Wherever God has a son, I have a brother. Whether he be Methodist or, or Baptist or... Or the Presbyterians? Even a pedestrian. Yes, a Presbyterian. What you said in there, does the school know about these meetings? Oh, well, I wouldn't call them official meetings, just some friends getting together to talk. Uh, by the way, I'm Carl Ketcherside, and you're... Edward Fudge. You're not Benny Lee's son, are you? Proud to say I am. He's a good man, your dad. You know him? Oh, everybody knows Benny Lee. What? Tell me something. How can you get away with talking like that on campus? It, it, it seems to me that if the powers that be knew, they wouldn't be too happy. Uh, maybe not, but truth is truth. Seems like you might need a little more convincing. Well, my daddy always said, if the Bible says it, it's true, even if the whole world's against it. Well, yeah, prove me wrong. From the Bible, shouldn't be that hard.
Do they still do the Sermon on the Steps? Every Friday. Why don't you work up a little talk about why all believers are not unified by grace? I'll be there. All right. Next Friday, Sermon on the Steps. Now, Sermon on the Steps was a tradition at Coastal Christian. The theology students could try out their skills on whoever was around to listen. It wasn't that serious. Of course, Edward took it serious. He took everything serious. That boy couldn't eat an apple without pondering its existence. Now, on this particular Friday, Don Holloway was up first, and he was old hand at it. So he could strut his stuff, so to speak. Yet there are some who would say, it's all right. We can bend the rules a little. What's important is what's in a man's heart. What's important is that he believes. Well, that may be man's way, but that is not the Lord's way. I will not tell a man he is saved without being baptized. We dare not loose what God has bound. Thank you, Mr. Holloway. Now, is there anyone else today who has a message they would share before us? Anyone? Yes, Mr. Fudge. You have two minutes. <clears throat> it's, it's, it's not so much a sermon as, as a question. How is it we, we claim to be members of the body of Christ, but are the first ones to shun those who don't believe exactly like us? Now, is, is belief a prerequisite for fellowship? A, a, a fella I met recently, he's, he's here today, he, he challenged me to prove that we shouldn't fellowship with people who, do, who believe differently from us. And you know what? I, I couldn't. Not, not, not from Scripture, not from my reading of it, at least. So for me, the question is, is still unanswered. Now, if anyone knows the, the answer to that question, I, I, I'd be happy to buy him a cup of coffee. Oh, come on now, let's give him a big hand. <laughs> Stop crowd. Get him next time. So which Athens do you say you were from? The one where they don't teach you not to shut your big fat mouth, I guess. Oh, well, I found it kind of refreshing. It's like watching a fella drown. Say, would you like to get a cup of coffee or, or something? I mean, since no one else seemed to take me up on my offer. Sure. Why not? I mean, I've never known a campus troublemaker before. <laughs> the next thing you know, to catch me trying to drag a harmonica into church. <laughs> well, I guess that's where it started with Catch Aside and a Sermon on the Steps. Just a little practical moratorium between friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, at, at first, there were others who preached on the steps, young ministers passionate about some little truth they had managed to corner. But uh, after a while, it just ended up being Don Holloway and me. If a church cannot maintain its foundations, it becomes as a house built upon the sand. The gospel is not about building up walls to keep people out. It's about breaking down walls to invite people in. <laughs> you keep telling them that, Mr. Fudge. Make it your own. Those who would have us compromise the faith of our fathers say they do it in the name of love, fellowship, while at the same time, calling us close-minded, with all their rules and rites and rituals. Where was Christ? With fishermen and tax collectors, dining with, with sinners and publicans. Can, can there be a more shining example of unity fellowship than that? Mr. Fudge, I'm Simon Claridge. Is there some place where we might have a word? Of course. Excuse me. Oh, of course I knew who he was. Everyone knew who Simon Claridge was. You know, every year he would come and speak to the students. 
that, that he knew who Edward was. I mean, that was just an honor. That he wanted to talk to him. I just, I just couldn't believe it. Mr. Fudge. I was impressed by what I heard today. Thank you, sir. I know your father. Godly man. And the Lord has blessed you with a powerful gift, just as he did Benny Lee. But to whom much is given, much is required. Would you agree? Yes, sir, I would. That's why I'm just a bit troubled by what I heard today. This grace unity business in particular it tears down walls that God never intended to be torn down. Do you understand? No, sir, I, I, I don't think I do. It's our job to uphold our standards, not suggest they aren't necessary. They are necessary. In time, you'll learn just how necessary they are in the meantime. I would strongly suggest that you go easy on all this progressive hokum. You wouldn't want to jeopardize your future now, would you? But I don't think it's hokum. Now, I haven't been able to find one verse that contradicts anything I've said. Not one, nothing. Mr. Fudge, some men study a lifetime just to begin to glimpse the faintest understanding of God's holy scripture. How fortunate for you to have grasped it in so short a time. Brother Claridge. Yes? I started learning Greek when I was six. This is an institution of higher learning. Lively debate is the lifeblood of any college or university. Well, this has gone way past lively debate. This fudge character is out of control, and I, for one, want him stopped. Mr. Holloway here is a member of the Student Leadership Council, and he's just as upset as I am. Aren't you, Don? What fudge is preaching is heresy, pure and simple. If he's preaching heresy, call him on it. Refute it. Show him the error of his ways. Just don't drag this office into it. If he's preaching heresy, the one you should be trying to convince is him, not me. You ready to do a little preaching there, son? Yes, sir. H. Charles commentary on the Pseudepigrapha. The what? The, the Pseudepigrapha. It's, it, it's, they were ancient Jewish religious texts written between the time of the old Edward, and do you remember? We had a date. Oh. Oh, our date. I'm sorry. I, let, let me get my things. I mean, it's one thing for you to stand me up for another girl, but the Pseudepigrapha? The pseudepigrapha different from the apocrypha. The, the apocrypha coming from the Greek, meaning those Edward. haven't been hit. What is that? Edward, can you do that? Not without a fight. And it, it, it says it all over campus. Refute the dangerous teachings of Edward Fudge. This is Simon Claridge's doing. I guarantee you, he put Holloway up to it. Well, if it were a debate or, or some give and take, I could understand that. But, th but this, is, this is like I'm some heretic about to be burned to the stake. I don't think Florida law allows that. Shined and ostracized? Now, that's something I know a little bit about. What should I do? What do you want to do? Ignore him? I want to take him on. OK, then. But he's going to make it about character. You need to make it about character, too. 
I don't even know that much about the man, but his character. Not his character, not your character. God's character. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here today for a special and urgent purpose to refute once and for all the dangerous teachings of Edward Fudge. Now, week after week, he has stood on these very steps preaching his own feel-good gospel, the gospel according to Fudge. A gospel where it doesn't matter what you believe as long as you believe in something. Now, week after week, we have respectfully listened to his ideas about abundant grace for all. Week after week, we have listened to his ideas about fellowship with outsiders. How it doesn't matter if someone is living a life contrary to what we know is right. Now, Fudge says we should welcome them anyway. Fellowship with them. Don't split hairs. Well, I'm here to tell you today, friends, this grace unity gospel is no gospel at all. The church does not support it, the Bible does not support it, and the Lord God of the universe does not support it. And anyone who thinks differently is guilty, guilty of heresy. I think we need to send a message loud and clear to all the Edward Fudges of the world that we are not about to let his lies and distortions go unchallenged. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone who sweareth by him shall glory, and the mouth of those who speak lies shall be stopped. Mr. Halloway says I have my own gospel, gospel according to fudge, but he is mistaken. I don't have my own gospel, and I certainly don't have some corner on truth, but I do know one thing. Good Lord spent a lot more time calling folks to him than turning them away. Perhaps Brother Holloway should go back and read John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Whosoever means whosoever. Whosoever means you and me. No lines, no barriers. Whosoever. M M Mr. Holloway says I'm guilty. Well, he's right. I am guilty. When it comes to believing that God's grace is meant for everyone, I am guilty. Guilty as a fox in a room full of feathers. Are you okay? I'm all right. I'm fine. I he was so dashing, standing on his bicycle, preaching to the crowd. I'll admit it. I was gone. I was a gone pecan. And not long after that, he proposed. He did. Not long after that, we were married, and not too long after that, he got offered his first church, the New Zion Congregation. Not long after that, I found out I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. One thing led to another, I guess. Mm -hmm. What was it like being a preacher's wife? Take some getting used to? Well, yes and no. Um, most preachers had it pretty cushy, you know, nice house, working one day a week, and. New Buick every couple years, you know. So, no new Buick? <laughs> no. No, he, he drove his old beat-up Opal GT. I mean, it was almost as bad as his bicycle. <laughs> no, it, it, it wasn't what I expected. But, um, the people, the people were lovely. Most of them, anyway. And Edward, he was happy preaching on Sundays and working part-time for his daddy at the publishing company. You know, he even found time to write a book. Yes, sir, that's one good author. Well, I might read that book myself. <laughs> well, what you think, son? The grace of God by William Edward Fudge. <laughs> that looks pretty good. Yes, sir, that is one fine piece of writing. You should be very proud. This is New Zion Congregation. Been here about two years. Oh, it's open. Our custodian must be here. Arnold, we got company. Ah. 
Come on inside, I'll show you around. I think you'll find it rivals the great cathedrals of Europe. Why, Brother Fudge, how you doing? Arnold, very well, very well. What you got there? Oh, this? Oh, that Thomas boy took it with a Crayola. Thought I'd clean it off for his folks, see? Oh, you, you taking home movies? <laughs> no, this is, uh, this is a documentary about some research I'm doing. Oh, a documentary? Like Roots? <laughs> nothing, nothing that fancy. This, this is Arnold. He keeps everything ship-shape around here. We could, we, could not, we could not live without him. I know this man's father from the radio. Spiritual guidance. I missed him lately. He hadn't been on in a couple of days. Mama says he's got the sniffles. Oh. Well, I guess I better find me some thinner so I can get this Creole off. Mm. Say, so Arnold. Yeah? Now, you know what the Lord said to the cheapskate painter? What's that? Repaint. And thin no more. <laughs> Repaint and thin no more. I'm gonna have to remember that one. <laughs> oh. oh, these these folks are salt of the earth, Jimmy. Absolute salt of the earth. Yeah, it's just like I thought. You'll be dragging that muffler soon. Now that's all I'm dragging. I consider myself blessed. Give me that bail of wire. Sure that's gonna be strong enough? Eh, yeah. life will be the strongest part of the whole darn car. You see this? No, what's that? The True Word magazine is what it is. Just so happens there's an editorial view of your book in there. Written by none other than Don Holloway. How's there, V? Hello, Joe Mark. Well, what's it say? Well, it says, Edward Fudge's book, The Grace of God, continues his dangerous descent down the path of compromised values shoddy research, and faulty hermeneutics. That it was published by his father, noted radio preacher and publisher Benny Lee Fudge, is no surprise, since it is doubtful anyone else would have. Well, are you just going to take this? Yeah, we're going to take that. Well, what choice do I have? I can't unprint it. Well, you could write a rebuttal. Right, now, there's no use chasing the devil's dogs. Devil's dogs? Yeah. Canis luciferus. All right. Tired of that joke? No. <laughs> now this stuff is deep. It takes a while to get through. But what I'm what I'm what I'm trying to do is verify and disqualify each of those cards up there. Now I started with the Old Testament issue. Traditionalists they say that there's little or nothing about the lost in there, but the conditionalists think that it has plenty to say. So what you got? Well, take a look. So these these are all Old Testament texts, all of them. Now there's 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 dozens of them. You use words like 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 cut off, right? Come come to nothing, disappear, destroy, perish over here. Now, now that all that all sounds like oblivion to me. Wait, what about where it says their worm will not die and their fire will not be quenched? That sounds like eternal torment to me. Aha, uh -huh, but the worm is not the soul now, is it? And the fire will not be quenched simply means that the fire won't be put out until there's nothing left to burn. Now, now, worms and fire will both commonly refer to the destruction of corpses, you know, dead, dead bodies. I know what corpses are. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's, there's more, man. It's just, it just keeps getting deeper and deeper, and it all points one direction. And guess what? Score one for the conditionalist. Yep. I mean, you see what I mean? I, I, I have read all these intertestamental books, Judith, Enoch, the whole Apocrypha, and the Pseudepigrapha. I mean, they, they don't agree on hell, fire, and torment. Torment? These are his brand new pants. Grass stains on both knees. So all I'm saying is that there was no agreement on hell in Jesus' day. Your best Van Houston? It's ruined. Oh, that, yep, that, that, I had, there was an accident at the potluck. <gasps> So, so you just put it in the hamper? 
Edward, how am I ever going to get that stain out now? I'm, I'm sorry. I just I have been consumed by all this eternal punishment stuff. You want, to, you want to see eternal punishment? Try doing laundry for this family. And another thing, now, if you take the difference between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, there is one thing about... You, why don't you let me get that? Saved by the bell. Hello? When? I'll be right there. Trouble with the flock. It's about my daddy. Why don't you tell me he was this sick? You know your daddy refused to go to the doctor. And by the time I got him well, here... what is it? Pneumonia. Both lungs. And they don't know if they can save him. Daddy. Edward, uh, yeah, you here? I am. Sarah Faye, too. I didn't mean to tell you something. Tell me what, Daddy? Don't worry what they say. It doesn't matter. It only matter what God said. I am proud of you, my son. Very, very proud. How come you've never brought me here before? I haven't been back since the day Davy died. Who? The Hollis boy. Davy Hollis. We were childhood friends. <laughs> he and me and Joe Mark used to come up here and sneak cigarettes. It's kind of funny when you think about it. Davy was bound and determined to see the world. In the end, he only made it as far as Haggard's Creek. I was always struck by how wrong it seemed. Mm -hmm. What's a kid doing burning forever in hell? Oh, would, would a loving God really do that? I don't know. You don't have to solve every mystery. Not by yourself, anyway. Edward, you're worn out. We're working two jobs. Publishing company and at New Zion. Now with your daddy sick. Sometimes you just can't think everything through. Sometimes you just have to feel it. I felt that. What are you doing? Where are you? Sarah Faye, where are you going? Give me your foot. My foot? Give me your foot. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Give me your other one. Benny Lee died just a few days later. And for a while there, it seemed as though Edward had lost his anchor. The folks at New Zion, they lifted us up and surrounded us with love. You couldn't have asked for a better church family. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Brother Fudge, Sister Sarah.
Before I begin, let's have a word of prayer. Brother Arnold, come, pray for us. Come right up, brother, please. For your blessings, we thank you, Lord. Please be with our dear brother Fudge, comfort and strengthen him. We're thankful to him for his preaching and for your tender mercy to us in this sorrowful time of need. Amen. Amen. Imagine. Save you some time researching hell. This here's a front row seat. <laughs> Close as I care to get, thank you. It's gonna take a blowtorch to get that one off. You got a blowtorch, Jimmy? <laughs> <laughs> right here. So, how's the research coming? Anything I can help with? Well, I I'm having trouble with another traditionalist card. It's the one about the intertestamental stuff. Yeah, that's not surprising. I read a bit about those guys. You know, maybe there's a reason they're not in the Bible. Hmm. Yeah, so, uh, what I am working on is the teachings of Jesus Christ himself. Now, now what, what impresses me, what has always impressed me about him is that he is all about God's love for sinners. Yeah. But he does talk about judgment. He does. He does. But when he does, it's all about finality and, and, and destruction. You know, there's, there's nothing in there about an everlasting life of agony for the lost. Edward, we gotta go uh, to Matt's place. Mom's got the kids, so I'm gonna come with you and get Helen's apple tart recipe. I almost forgot. I gotta get out to New Zion. Was the, the elder wants to talk about something? I'll keep working on this bolt. Jimmy, you keep him out of the fridge. You bet. You hungry, Jimmy? Yes, sir. Wonder what he wanted. Did he ever say? He did not. He said he had something he wanted to discuss. Well, I guess he hadn't heard of the telephone. Evening, Matt. Evening, Brother Fudge. Miss Fudge, do you mind if I ask you to sit in the car while I talk to your husband a little while? <laughs> Not at all. Thank you. Thank you for coming out. Sure, what's, what's, what's on your mind, Matt? Well, it's uh, no real easy way to say this. I'll just go ahead and get right to the point. Edward, uh, there's been a meeting down to the church. Oh? Uh, all the other elders and a good number of the members, too. We, um... <clears throat> We feel that now might be a good time for a change. A change? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh, in leadership, actually. Uh, we've, um, we, we took an action to, to have you replaced. You're firing me? Well, we, we, we voted to make a change, is what we did. Voted? Oh, well, I, I would have liked to have been there. Well, the preacher serves to, to the pleasure of the congregation, Edward. I don't suppose this had anything to do with last Sunday's service now, did it? Uh, well, the, the membership felt that it would, it would be the best direction for the church to go. I see. Uh, to, I didn't vote for it, though. I mean, uh, just so you know, uh, well, thank you. I always thought you was a good preacher and still do. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. Well, that, uh, that's all I got. Uh, I'd prefer to give bad news to people in person. I, I apologize for the drive. Good luck. What was that? Seems I just got fired. It hurt him deeper than he ever let on what happened at New Zion. But there wasn't time to dwell on it. But the publishing company had been in trouble for a while now, and 
And, you know, just when we thought Edward's mother was going to have to close it down, we got some good news. Good morning. Thank you all for coming this morning. Good morning. Uh, as you know, in the course of finalizing your late husband's estate, there's still the matter of his publishing company. Now, as you're also aware, I'm sure, the aforementioned publishing company has had financial difficulties for quite some time now. But I do have some rather good news. We could certainly use some. A man has offered to buy the company and absorb the debt. He is uh, working with an investor group out in California. California? Yeah. Now, I should also inform you that the bank has accepted his offer. Now, Mr. Fudge, this man would like to meet with you in person on the premises tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Would that work for your schedule? I believe it would. Hello? Like what you see? You? You're the buyer? It's a new feature we're running. Column by Don Holloway. You remember Don, don't you? Why buy my daddy's company? What's it to you? Well, I've always had the utmost respect for your father's work. He was always straight as an arrow. Doctrinally speaking, that is. So when I heard that the company was for sale, I contacted a friend of mine from California. And he jumped at it. What do you plan to do with the press? Well, continue your father's good work, naturally, with a new publication. Which is where you come in. I understand you still work here from time to time. I did. Good. Well, we would like you to continue. You know the operation better than anyone, and frankly, I'm guessing you could use the income. I understand you're between churches at the moment. No, oh, it would certainly help. I won't deny that. Good. Oh, there's just one more thing. My investor from California, he's a little nervous. He's heard some things about you that he finds troubling. So he would like you to write a letter denouncing all these new ideas, and that way everyone will know where you're coming from and we'll all be on the same page. And if I don't, I think... Actually, I am certain that he would find that less than ideal. Well, that is just as well because I am not interested. And that was that. Can't say it didn't hurt, though. Joe Mark? He'll never know how much his friendship meant to me back then. Ah. Speaking of heat, <laughs> I was reading in the book of Jude. That's a good book, Jude. Short and to the point, not a whole lot of fat. <laughs> Uh, it, it says that Sodom and Gomorrah were, were destroyed as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Seems right. Right. Now, let me ask you something. What did Abraham see the next day? Crispy critters. <laughs> no. Smoke. Not fire, not brimstone, just smoke. Seems right to you. Now, the, the supposedly eternally burning punishment of the wicked in Sodom and Gomorrah didn't even last a day. And if it's an eternal fire, how come we can't go see it? How come we can't go drive out in the desert somewhere and watch it burn? I think I saw that at Disneyland. No, no. That was the painted desert. Remember those mud pots that are bubbling up? I love that. I'm serious. If it's an eternal fire, how come it's not still burning? Well, maybe... Maybe it's just a figure of speech. Or maybe... Maybe it meant exactly what it said, and we just didn't get it. 
Maybe eternal doesn't mean ongoing. Maybe it means final. What, what, what was destroyed was destroyed forever. Huh. Hello? Yes, it's Edward Fudge. Who? I'm sorry, who? Don Holloway. That was him on the phone. And what did he want? He wants to meet for lunch. Well, I sincerely trust you told him no. No, I didn't tell him no. After what he wrote about your book? You most certainly should have. Well, he called me. I mean, he, he, he took the time to, to, to look me up. Somebody reaches out to you like that, you, you don't turn him away, no matter what your history. Well, you can forgive awful easy, seems to me. I can forgive. You are something, Mr. Fudge. Always seeing that glass half full instead of half empty. Promise me one thing. Anything. Kindly remember there are some folks out there that just as soon take that half full glass and pour it down your neck. <laughs> they hit you on the head with it, give them a chance. <laughs> <laughs> well, my head's pretty hard, in case you hadn't noticed. Just be careful. I will. Good afternoon and welcome to the Red Caboose. We're going to do a little picking for you. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Good to see you, brother. Here, have a seat. Now, I went ahead and ordered myself a nice tea. Would you like one? Sure. Wouldn't turn that down for a bucket of doorknobs. <laughs> Miss, a sweet tea for my friend here. And your wife, Sarah Ann. Sarah Faye. She's fine. She's fine. Now, as I mentioned on the phone, I was so sorry to hear about your father. Life is tenuous. Just a slender thread tying us to immortality, as the poet says. I am sorry. Thank you. Edward, I think it's high time that we wipe the slate clean. Let bygones be bygones. Life is too short. Amen to that. I've always felt a little bad about that book review. I was a little hard on you. Probably should have toned it down. So, what brings you to Athens? They've got me conducting a series of gospel meetings over at Westside. These days, I find our people get so easily distracted. Sometimes it's necessary to bend them back to the truth. So I'm doing a little preaching, maybe a little bending. I heard about your unfortunate experience over at New Zion. I wanted to provide what encouragement I could. It's very kind of you. Thanks. <laughs> I thought it might have left you bitter. Well. It's it's hard to be mad at those people. They've been so good to me. Yeah, they are the salt of the earth. Yeah, but they, they fired you for asking a black man to pray. Well, to be fair, there's, there's more to it than that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, <laughs> I have not always been the most diplomatic when it comes to my views on, uh, uh, well, my, my views. Oh, come on, say what's on your mind. You're among friends. It's, it's, it's like we're standing on some dam we built to hold back a river of God's grace. Now, it, it, and it's not just a sectarian issue. It's not about what church is right and what church is wrong. <laughs> Sounds like the same old Edward I've always known. <laughs> it's the it's same old me. <laughs> I'll tell you, Don, I'm, I'm discovering things that strike at the very foundation of everything we've been taught to believe. Well, I appreciate your honesty. <laughs> <laughs> you always did say it was on your heart. <laughs> I hope that's not a bad thing. <laughs> oh, no. It's a useful thing. A very useful thing. Am I disturbing you? No more than usual. I think you ought to see this. <laughs> I see you brought me the funny papers. Ain't all that funny. <laughs> Here, look. Edward Fudge, A Dangerous Voice in Troubled Times, by Don Holloway. He drew me out. He got me talking, brother to brother. 
Said he didn't want to see me bitter. That ain't the worst of it. You know how you told me he said he was bending folks back to the truth? Turns out the only thing he was bending was you. He spent Thursday night preaching against dangerous influences creeping into the church. Top of the list, Edward Fudge. <laughs> how am I supposed to defend myself against that? I can, can, can a fella just stand up in a, in a meeting and crucify somebody without giving them a chance to say their side? Whether he can or not, he sure enough did. Okay. Now, this is what I do. I get on the phone right now. Tell them you want to set up a meeting. But it's got to be small, personal, just the preachers and the elders. Say what you believe, state your position, then walk away. Simple as that. That might just work. But you got to keep it small, personal. Call them up. Well, I tell you, I was expecting maybe 15 elders there that night. I could not have been more inaccurate about that. Okay, you two stay put. I'll get to the bottom of this. Hey, Edward. Jim, you're here too? I thought there'd be about 15 people here. Nothing but a lynching, pure and simple. Come on, let's get out of here. Let's go get some barbecue. This is how they want it. I'll give it to them. You ain't going in there, are you? Of course I am. What choice have I got? I walk away now, I will have conceded. I will have lost every shred of moral authority. No, they want a rebuttal. They'll get one. Mrs. Fudge? Yes? I'm Cecilia Holloway, Cece, Don Holloway's wife. I just, I just want to tell you how truly sorry I am for what's about to happen. We better get in there. Is there anything I can do? Yes. Pray for two things. Pray I don't get so angry I cuss and pray I don't pee my pants. <laughs> Mr. Fudge, hold on just a sec. You plan on bringing that camera in here? You got a table full of tape recorders. You worry about some little camera. I see our guest has arrived, so we might as well get started. Now, Brother Fudge claims that I have misrepresented him and has asked for a chance to explain his positions on these crucial topics. So with open minds and hearts, I'm sure you will join me in welcoming him to share with us, to explain and enlighten us. Oh, yes, and there's one more thing. At the back of the church, you will find position cards with Simon Claridge just standing. Please raise your hand, Brother Claridge, so people can see you. Yes. Now, I invite each of you to take one on your way out. You will see I have listed my positions and the churches on one side. And have even signed my name, so you will know where I stand. Brother Fudge's positions are on the other. It remains to be seen if he'll be willing to sign his name. Brother Fudge, the time is yours. You know, if I had a couple of slices of bread and some mayonnaise, I could make a sandwich with all the bologna here tonight. Brother Holloway has told you where he stands. Now, let me tell you where I stand. It is where I have always stood. I am a Christian and an evangelical, persuaded that scripture is the word of the living God written. I believe it is without error in anything it teaches. And it is the only source of binding unquestionable doctrine on any subject. It is the final authority. Now, People interpret differently according to the light they've been given. That is human nature. But that notwithstanding, when it comes to salvation, I believe that it is God's intention to save as many as he can, and I believe to punish as few as possible. And by the way, no church has an exclusive claim to his grace. So I, I guess you would say that Baptists and Lutherans and Catholics will be in heaven. I would. Well, I, 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 I'm I, speechless. I honestly don't know what to say. <laughs> Does anyone wish to respond? When Halloway asked if anybody wanted to respond, I think that he thought that no one would. But he was wrong. I've got something to say. My name is 
Arvid McGuire. A lot of you know me here. I've done my share of preaching around these parts, and I've known this man for 20 years. You want to judge him. Fine. Who of you have studied what he has? Who of you have gone back, read those ancient texts, studied those ancient languages? No one? I would wager that he knows his Bible better than anybody here, yet you would judge him? <laughs> I doubt if I changed any minds. Halloway pretty well had him convinced from the start. Wait a minute, those position cards. Where are my position cards? Mr. Fudge? How can I help you, ma'am? What would your father say? To be tearing down the very church he loved and everything it stood for. How dare you? You should be ashamed. You should all be ashamed. Well, that was interesting. The deck was stacked against you before you even set foot in the place. Well, the fact that any of those people will take it upon themselves to judge you. I mean, who do they think they are? Judging anyone, let alone you. Yeah. At least old Holloway didn't get a chance to pass out his darn position cards. Well, whatever happened to those cards? You mean these? Mama. <coughs> you did. I most certainly did. Well, I'll be. Well, what happens now? Back to work. Do you think there'll be any lasting fallout? Well, I suspect it will. I, I know for a fact it won't be welcome in any church in <laughs> Limestone County. Maybe not even North Alabama. Mm. Uh, but the good news is there'll be time to finish my research. Mm. So, all figured out yet? Well, right now I am down to that one last card, church tradition. But to be honest, I feel like I am swimming in a sea of conflicting information. Now, I, <laughs> here I am with a master's degree, and I feel like a sixth grader and doesn't know fact from fiction. Well, if anybody can figure it out, you can. <laughs> I, I used to think so.
Leave them. Mama's been asking to see the kids. Maybe I'll take them up for a visit. There's food in the fridge, fresh orange juice, lots of cereal. For how long? I don't know. J just until you finish. It's so hard to see you like this. Here, but not here. Edward, this way you'll have the house all to yourself. No distractions. I'll call. Every day I'll call. put me in the lowest pit, in the darkest depths. You have taken from me my closest friends and have made me repulsive to them. I am confined and cannot escape. My eyes are dim with grief. That's from Psalms. Looking back on it, I feel like I crossed a line somewhere. Went, went from being an independent researcher to a, a defender of my own beliefs. It, it was a, a battle between my head and my heart. Mortal soul, wages of sin is death. Body dies, soul survives. Wages of sin is death. Immortal soul. Immortal soul. Death, immortal soul, immortal soul. Hey, what's wrong with this picture? Where, where in the Bible does it say immortal soul? You wait there. That's what it was. Come on. Come on. Figured it must be you. We gotta talk. All right, come on in. Nice room. Oh, you like it? I had it a long time. Really? Who'd have thought? Mm. All right. Let's have it. I found a missing piece of the puzzle. OK. It, it, is, it is so simple. I don't know how I missed it. I mean, we have all missed it. It's this idea of the immortal soul. Now, yeah, that's the part of us that supposedly lives on after it, we die. Yeah. yeah. OK. It turns out, it is a myth. Doesn't exist. Bible never mentions it. Now, somehow, it, it snuck its way into our beliefs, been there 2,000 years, and it's a lie. A lie. Mm-hmm. Strong words. I know. You realize you're attacking the very foundation of Christian religion. Listen, we have all assumed something that isn't true. This, this, this immortal soul deal. It's not Christian. It's pagan. 
All right, it came straight down through Plato and Socrates. I just read this out an hour ago, okay? The Greek converts brought the idea with them to the early Christian church, and it stuck. Keep going. Now, I, tr I track this Greek idea right, right, in, right into the Christian church of the early third century. Now, there's, there's this, this Greek fellow named Tertullian, right? He converted to Christianity and then ended up becoming a real big and important theologian. He taught that Jesus didn't mean it when he said that God can destroy both the body and soul in hell. There. There it is, body and soul, body and soul. Body and soul. It, it, it was a common way of referring to, to, to the complete person, but we still do it today. So Tertullian thought that Jesus was wrong? He reinterpreted Jesus. Now, now, now he said, because the soul is immortal, there must be some everlasting punishment for the wicked, eternal torment. But what Jesus really taught was the destruction of the wicked, the annihilation of the body and soul. And that means? Well, that means no everlasting life for the lost, no eternal torment, no ever-burning hell. Huh. <laughs> so, Mr. Smead will have his answer. I guess he will. Hey, you got pie? Yeah. I got pie. So it all came down to Plato. No, 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 not hardly. Well, Plato was an important part of the overall puzzle, but there is a lot more to it than that. Yeah? yeah just forget Plato. Forget, forget all the arguments. Now, it all comes down to this. Mm -hmm. Take a look at these words, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, note, note that word perish, Jimmy. Yeah. And Jesus chose that word very, very, very carefully. Now, he, he, he could have said, we'll not live forever in agony, but he didn't. Now, it is, it is the believers who live forever. That's, that's you and me. I like that. Mm. Now what? Months of writing it all up. Well, it shouldn't be too hard. Well, <laughs> I know all the words. I just have to put them in the right order, as they say. <laughs> well, I can't say I wasn't relieved to be finishing the research, but um, truth can be hard to swallow. <laughs> At least it was for me. It was, it was such an about face. Ed Wood. <laughs> well, it's good to see you. What brings you out here in this, this part of the neighborhood? Brother, I need some advice. <clears throat> now, you know that, that work I've been doing on hell, it's, it's finished. Yeah? How'd it turn out? <laughs> You want to rile up some saints? <laughs> <laughs> it will certainly do that. And we've, we've gotten it all wrong. We have from the start. There is no unending torment in hell, and I can prove it. Mm. Well, what's the problem? Well, I'm standing against 2,000 years of Christian history here, and more importantly, 35 years of what my daddy passed on to me. Now, these, these roots run deep. I'm gonna make matters worse, there's a fellow from a radio who wants, wants me to do an interview with him, and set the record straight. Mm. You gonna do it? I don't know. How can I tell people that everything that they have believed is a lie? But if it's true, how can you not? Is that it? That is it. Well, I tell you, Edward, I've been at this preaching business a while, and I figured like this. Folks are partial to the truth that they've already got. If you come marching up with some brand new 200 watt light, folks are gonna say, whoa, wait a minute, too much light. I prefer that itty bitty light at the back of the refrigerator. It's always on when I need it. And if I don't need it, I don't even think about it. I well, see so he's saying, he's saying I shouldn't. I'm saying be careful. Be careful. If you think you got your tail feather singed over that west side, well, you just wait until all of evangelical Christendom shows up at your doorstep ready for some, some serious grilling. You'll just wish it was those dear saints from west side.
Ten seconds, Mr. Fudge. Our guest today is Edward Fudge, who was commissioned to do an in-depth research project on the origins of hell and came up with some startling conclusions. Welcome, Mr. Fudge. Glad to be here. Let's get right to it. You've spent several months doing in-depth research on the existence of hell? On whether or not never-ending torment in a place commonly referred to as hell exists, yes. And you've reached a conclusion? I have. Well, I'm sure we'd all like to know what that is. Well, the truth is, there is no such thing as unending torment. Now, God does not torture sinners in hell forever. Wow, now that's, that's really going to shake some people up. Well, <laughs> tell me about it. No, some people may want to tar and feather you and run you out of town <laughs> on the rail. Well, probably. But one thing I do know, if the Bible says it, it's true even if the whole world is against it. I'll buy that. Listen, it all comes down to who God really is, what he's really like, and how he loves us. Now, it's, it's, all, it's all through this book. It, it, it couldn't be more clear. Here, Romans, now, now listen. The wages of sin is death. Death, not eternal punishment. speaker, Edward Fudge, takes a different position. But that's not unusual for him. He's always been a maverick of sorts. He's smart, articulate, and in my opinion, dead wrong about hell. He's the author of a new book that challenges everything we believe on the subject. Just, just explain it to them like you did to me. You're going to be fine. Now let me see you. We should all pray that he repents before he finds out what hell is really like. Go get him, Tiger. Brother Fudge. We're with you, Brother Fudge. Please be seated. Now, when I was, when I was 13, I had a, a friend named Davy, Davy Hollis. Now, Davy had not yet come to the Lord. Now, he might have, after he sowed a few wild oats, but he never got the chance. Almost as terrible as the thought of never seeing him in heaven was the belief that he was burning forever and ever in hell. I thought, how can the God who loves the world so much he gave his only begotten son so believers in him would not perish but have everlasting life, turn around and throw billions of them into something resembling a lake of volcanic lava and make it so they cannot die now, I am, I am happy to tell you that that is not the God I know. Now, we may not see Davy in heaven, although I am not too sure about that. But one thing I am sure of is he is not burning forever in hell. For you see, hell is simply a fire that consumes.
Ask 50 people if you're going the right way. You're gonna get a hundred different directions. We'll share with just ten what you truly believe, and you'll get at least twenty objections. Maybe you've got all the answers to life when we all decide. Then pray that we're right. Each generation seems to write its own song, but it's so hard to know just who's right and who's wrong. No, it's not a sign that's hanging over the door, and life's not a game where God's keeping score. This journey we're taking is so much more. Keep it. 